Welcome to Celebrating Act 2. Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life. Well, it's good to see everybody uh, for another episode of Celebrating Act 2. I've got my great partner, John Coleman, and one of our favorite, favorite doctors, like our only favorite doctor, Dr. Liz. <laughs> How's that feel, Dr. Liz? Love it. I love it. It feels wonderful. <laughs> to be our only favorite doctor. Um, I, I want to bring <laughs> up the good. subject uh, that is really oriented towards women more than men because it shouldn't be. It's driving women crazy, but it is. The fact of the matter is that women seem to get more wrinkles than men as we mm -hmm. age. And, uh, you know, being of a certain age, all the women I know have a lot of wrinkles. Doesn't bother me, but it bothers them tremendously, particularly those sure. fine lines around the lip, the upper yes. lip. Um, yes. The men I know are mostly, it's the wrinkles at the eyes. And mm -hmm. somebody okay. told me it's because men shave and therefore shaving is defoliation, exfoliation, whatever okay, the word is. Okay, got it, sure. And sure. that Exfoliating helps the skin. skin. But my yes. real question is, why do women get wrinkles more than men? Okay, well, first let's just say that if we get the privilege of living long enough, most people across the board will get wrinkles. Yes, we can agree on that, yeah? Okay. <clears throat> okay, now, are they and they start usually around age 25. So we've, we've, all, we've talked a lot about hormones. <clears throat> Excuse me. We've talked lots and lots about hormones here. And one of the most interesting and wonderful hormones is called growth hormone that helps kids grow. So teenagers have very, they, they develop really, really high levels. And then of course we finish growing in height and then the levels taper off and then decline as we get older. And growth hormone definitely helps with the structure of the skin. Okay, so, and I'm gonna make sure we get to the differences between women and men. But for everybody, the loss of collagen, the loss of oils, the loss of the, the, the decrease in the dividing of the cells. Okay, so generally what happens with cells as we age. And so the way that shows up in the skin is the layer that makes skin plump underneath the surface layer of the skin gets thinner and the skin can do a little bit of drooping, less, less structure holding up. Uh, all the skin yeah. and in addition to repeating motions like smiling or you know the the laugh lines that that people talk about yeah and also um i had one woman describe her i call them laugh lines but the lines that go from your nose basically down around your your uh, mouth the outside of your mouth she called them puppet lines because <laughs> She thought she looked like Howdy Doody with a, you know, the mouth comes up right. and down, up and down. Sure. But sure. It, it, it that makes sense because if you're losing um, the thickness of the underlying material, collagen or whatever it is. Yes. Um, then the the folds, the natural folds of your face, like here, right, just get deeper. Yeah, they get more pronounced. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What about what about sun about damage? It. Ooh, okay. So we're that, let, let's let me answer the what the part about women versus men, and mm -hmm. then let's talk about sun damage. That's definitely important and contributes to wrinkles. The hormone component, as we always mention, I, I love to talk about. So I think that probably the observed differences. I'm not sure that there's really, and I, I have not personally seen studies about this looking at men and women. Let's say in their 70s and 80s, for example. Okay. But I would say for men, they have a more gradual decrease in hormone levels versus women. When we go through menopause, it's kind of more all of a sudden. And the loss of estrogen definitely contributes to the loss of the structures of the skin, loss of oils and retaining moisture of the skin. One more thing that I actually came across pretty recently to mention what you said about shaving and the exfoliation. Another thing that men do when they, after they're done is the with the aftershave. Turns yeah. out this is really a good habit. And women can do that too. It actually builds up the structures of the skin. So my person who helps with my facials tells me to, when I'm putting the creams on, not to just put them on the surface, but rub the muscles, really kind of work the muscles. And even, and that's okay too. 
So a loving thing would be for uh, partners to slap each other in the face on a regular basis. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. How nice. And tell them you said to? Is that what they should do? No, uh, John, John probably... Uh, let's, John is in charge of that department. Let's okay, well, it's John, John told them. Too. Yeah, okay. right. All right. Sun damage. We can talk mm. about that. Oh, so the yeah. Number, the number one thing that everybody should do to help their skin is if they smoke is to quit smoking that's yeah. number one Absolutely. Uh, reduces oxygen flow to all the tissues especially the skin plus all the dozens of chemicals uh, in cigarette smoke that are just damaging to cells it, it has a particular effect on the skin and contributing to wrinkles so loss of the underlying structures and just that the skin not having a uh, good structure so that's that's the most important Second to that is avoiding sun, sun damage to the skin. Uh, you know, I'm part of a uh, generation, I think it probably ended with me and my generation of laying in the sun as teenagers with baby oil. Oh boy, to yeah. To purposely burn because then that becomes a tan. Yeah. And I think most people are past that. I think that's not a thing anymore. I hope Hopefully so, yeah. younger people know not to do that. So avoiding sun is a very helpful way to delay and even prevent the development of wrinkles. That's an important one. Staying hydrated, good nutrition, even exercise that helps with blood flow in the whole body is gonna to help too. Okay, yeah, so now let's are... talk about treating, treating wrinkles. Uh, we, yeah. Atija, uh, so my opinion for me is that the wrinkles are part of getting older and part of the character. And quite frankly, to me, have when I see a wrinkled older person, and I'm getting older, but there are people far older than I, who I aspire to, to emulate by reaching their age and beyond. To me, wrinkles are actually uh, a mark of, uh, of, uh, of interest and beauty and like grains in wood or something like that. But I know a lot of people don't feel that way. Is there any way to, uh, they're topical or something we can do to, uh, besides uh, quit smoking and stay out of the sun? Uh, yes. All these things that people do, Botox and injections and this and that. What's that all about? Absolutely. It's a huge multi kajillion dollar industry. Then so we can talk about that as well as supplements. There are some supplements that are helpful. Uh, when I did a little Google search recently about this, it took less than a second to return almost 16 million results. Oh. So there are a lot of supplements out there that claim to help. For example, collagen definitely does help. It's That's been studied and shown. The problem with a lot of supplements is that the lesser quality supplements, they claim the benefits from studies done on proper high quality ingredients such as collagen, biotin, etc. So there are supplements. So that's one option and way to support the skin. Topicals, of course, include everything from good skin care in terms of cleansing as well as moisturizing. Then there are procedures. There are chemical peels. There are laser resurfacing procedures. Quite a bit of an industry that is out there now as well as you mentioned the injectables. So the injectables definitely need to be done by medically trained personnel. And that can include, so far I've found about four items that are FDA approved similar to Botox. Botox is being one of those, okay? And it's a very interesting injection because what it does is it actually paralyzes the muscles, okay? So for example, I have, I'm 56, I only just got my very first little bit of Botox right up here, and it's wearing off. I got it done a few months ago, it's wearing off, so now I can show you wrinkles, <laughs> whereas I couldn't when it was really in full effect. So it's very important that it's done by a professional who doesn't leave you looking like a permanent level of surprise or some other very unnatural kind of appearance. Yeah, and the the, uh, the uh, one more category to mention in with injections are called fillers, and there are at least thirteen products that I was able to find that are FDA approved. These include hyaluronic acid, they include collagen, different ingredient combinations, 
and they're just injected directly into various areas to lift things up, plump things up. When it's done nicely, it really can look okay. However, un a lot of us have seen the unfortunate results that can happen when people overdo it. Yeah, mm. uh, absolutely. I think uh, the topic of uh, injections, fillers, and Botox, things like that, really deserves its own video. Um, it's it's considered very popular, and uh, it sounds dangerous to me, quite frankly, because it's a toxin. Yeah, it it right. It would sound dangerous, but there. It's literally one of the safest meds that are out there. Again, mm. it's really only the difference between it, doing a nice job in terms of how the person looks afterwards uh, versus afterwards. But it's used for other medical indications uh, as well to relax muscles. For example, with migraines, uh, that is often being approved now, uncovered on people's insurance, mm. not for the aesthetic appearance, but for something like migraines caused by muscular contraction and tension in the muscles of the head. So you're right. I think that would be a very interesting, I can say more about the details of how it works, etc. But it really actually is very safe. No one has died from it. And uh, surprisingly so. So apart well, from reactions, local localized reactions, uh, it, it's really relative. It's, it's quite safe compared to a lot of what's out there. Good, good. Well, certainly well, it's, yeah. it's yeah. probably safe, learned a safe lot about them. skin care. Yeah, it's probably a lot safer than surgery in general. In other words, Absolutely. Before, yeah. Very much so. Very, very much so. And I wanted to also, it's the other side of my mug says celebrate your wisdom. So I'm with you, Art. I definitely, and I know you feel this way too, John. You're doing this program. So I know you right. feel this way. You know, the, whiz, the, the wrinkles can reflect the fact that we've spent some time on the planet and, uh, hopefully acquired some wisdom that we can impart to others. Yeah. Great. Well, we thank you for imparting your wisdom as always and uh, uh, bringing, bringing to four things that we suspect or we, we maybe not have asked anybody else because we weren't feeling bad, so we never asked our doctor. And uh, uh, sometimes we ask some provocative questions. Uh, uh, you can go back and take a look at your... Uh, playlist, which is probably 50 or 70 episodes long by now. Uh, and uh, we have some fun with it, but bring very serious information that for some people may be life changing. Uh, just to talk about something that would not normally be talked about. And so uh, you have our permission, the three from the three of us to wrinkle up. We love you. Send us your picture. Uh, you'll be our pin up boys and girls. Uh, we love wrinkles. Or if you do something else about it, at least be safe about it and understand why, why you're getting the wrinkles and if you want to avoid them, things you can do to work with them. So thank you very much uh, this time and for uh, all that you've done for our audience and will do in future episodes. Thank you. Welcome. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends, Celebrating Act 2 is the user manual for the second half of your life.